how do you analyze a potential property as to whether it's, you know, a go or a not or a no go? Mm -hmm. So again, it comes back to each of our individual strategies, right? So uh, the property where I'm at right now in Brazil, I, I live here about half the half the year. Uh, and then I do rent it out as a vacation rental, the other half. And so for me, this wasn't a hundred percent investment. So if I could pay the bills on it, I, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that because I really enjoy living here. But for others that are looking for a hundred percent investment, I think we need to know what sort of returns we want to expect. Uh, and, and one of the big changes for me from the long-term rental world into the short-term rental world was I was looking at single family homes that were maybe cash flowing, you know, like a, $200, $300 a month. Uh, and this was years and years ago when we had interest rates, we know that they've gone up quite a lot. So that's even harder to do these days. Um, but maybe having an idea of how much cash flow we want to, uh, to get back or just having a return. You know, one of the really nice things about a short term rental is that it has some other good tax advantages. I'm not a tax professional, so make sure you uh, consult your advisor. But a short term rental, depending on your average reservation length, can be considered an active business, which means that you don't have to be a real estate professional to take a lot of the real estate deductions like bonus depreciation. So it really comes down to our individual um, goals. You know, if someone's got a really high tax bill, they might be okay taking less money. Uh, but for me, that was always cash flow. You know, I wanted to earn the, the most cash flow possible so I could live and 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 travel around.